Okay, so we've decided from rank nullity, by considering rank nullity, that we need to have some of the nodes attached to external current sources. We need to, in other words, KCL cannot hold at all the nodes. Um, and so below me, look, I have drawn now my regular uh, circuit, my familiar graph, but now I have kind of attached node one and node two, if you like, to, if you think of it, you can kind of think of it as a battery. A lot of our, a lot of our, um, uh, a lot of our electrical engineering colleagues would probably draw something like that. You would uh, kind of attach node one and node two to the terminals of a battery. Okay. Um, I um, am not going to draw that. I'm just going to say that uh, the divergence at node one is plus one and the divergence at node two is minus one. And that is such that it satisfies the condition, remember, that um, F uh, transpose X naught is zero, where X naught is the uh, right null vector of A. OK, so we expect to find a nice solution to this. Now, remember what we have for, we're assuming, by the way, again, unit conductance of all the, all the conductors, all the edges. So we've got that the, uh, the, mate, the vector of currents is minus E, which is minus AX. Okay, that's Ohm's law. Then we've got that F, which now, by the way, is equal to 1 minus 1, 0, 0. I'm using 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, elements to denote nodes 1, 2, 3, 4 in an obvious way. And this, of course, is minus A transpose W. That's what we mean by the divergence. Um, and we're setting it to be 1, minus 1, 0, 0. And of course, we can then use this to deduce that minus A transpose minus AX uh, is equal to the F. So what we conclude then is that, remember, this is just KX, where K was the Laplacian matrix I introduced um, in a previous lecture. So now look, this is the, if we want to work out the, um, if we, this, this, this is the equation for the voltage, voltages at each of the nodes uh, given F. Okay, so uh, we know the Laplacian K, we know F, so here's a nice, uh, uh, matrix equation for X. So here's a question for you. Isn't the solution therefore just K inverse F? I would like it to be. That would make life very simple. Uh, unfortunately, it's not. The reason being, unfortunately, that K inverse doesn't exist. OK, this is a K is a singular matrix. OK, so K is singular. OK, and we know that for the following reason. Remember that K is A transpose A. And we know that X naught is such that A X naught is equal to zero. So there exists this uh, X naught vector. So this means that K X naught which is A transpose A X naught is obviously zero. OK, so therefore there exists a non-zero uh, null vector in the right null space of K. And it's the same right null vector that exists in the right null space of A. Now, I am going to leave it as a little exercise uh, to prove that X naught is the only uh, element in the right null space of A, of, of K. Okay. okay. It's the only element in the right null space of K. That's a little exercise. Okay. Let's think about what that right null vector means for K. Well, um, let's suppose that we, we know some x star such that kx star is equal to f, okay, for some given f. In this case, we've got 1, minus 1, 0, 0. But suppose we found a solution to this, a set of potentials that satisfied the problem. Then notice that um, x star plus cx naught for any c is also a solution. 
Because look, k x star plus c x naught is equal to k x star plus c k x naught. But this is zero because x naught's in the right null space of k. And this is, of course, f. So this thing also satisfies k x is equal to f. Okay, so it's another solution. So in other words, um, this singular nature of k, the fact that its inverse doesn't exist, is connected with the fact that I can add arbitrary uh, multiples of my x naught vector to any solution that I might have found. Okay, but think what think what that means. You know, look look c x naught is of course c times one 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 one, which is c c c c. So what it corresponds to this um, this thing here taking a solution and then adding this vector here, which is this vector here, means adding the same voltage to every node. And you can see that if you add the same voltage to every node, it doesn't change the potential drops because everyone's gone up or down by the same amount. So it doesn't change the potential drops. OK, so this singular nature of uh, k is very natural. It corresponds to the fact that we can kind of set the zero of potential voltage to be anything. In other words, engineers, our electrical engineering friends, like to call this grounding a node. And you can see now mathematically why this is a good thing to do. It's why it's forced on you because of the existence of this x naught right null vector. So and every t and next time your engineers uh, engineering friends tell you that they need to ground a node, you can think, oh, well, that's because there's that non-zero element of the right null space. OK, so underneath me, I've drawn this picture. And what I'm going to do, you see, for this particular node, so in other words, the, the idea is this. Uh, you set a node voltage, any, up to you to zero. That's what we mean by grounding it. OK, that's what we mean. So in my picture here, and by the way, of course, if you force one of the voltages to be zero, then it means you can't go willy nilly adding multi more, more voltage to all the nodes, because then the node voltage at that node fixed to be zero won't be zero anymore. And you're not allowing that. So by grounding a node, you get rid of this degree of freedom. OK, so it's a very natural thing to do. All right. Let's um, let's in our uh, here's our circuit. Look, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose to ground uh, node two. OK, so. Let me make the node two black. That's often what, you know, your electrician comes around. Um, you often use black or I think uh, different color, right, for, for the for the grounded wire. And um, so I'm going to use black. And I'm going to set x2, the voltage at node 2, to be 0. OK. Now, do you remember we've got this equation at the moment? This is what we've got. And we know f to be 1 minus 1, 0, 0. Now, let's just practice how we get k from this. Remember, there's, three, there's four nodes. And let me just show you how you can quickly look at the picture and get the Laplacian. Here's node one, okay? And here's how I like to do it. I like to see, I look at node one in the picture, I see how many edges are connected to it, two. So I put two in the diagonal. Then I look at which no other nodes is it connected to. It's connected to node two and four, look. So I put a minus one in two, a minus one in uh, underneath the four column, and I put a zero in three, because it's not connected by a direct edge to three. Let me look at node two, I do the same thing. In the diagonal, I put three because there are three, ed three edges connected to node two. And then it's connected, look, to all of the other edges, all of the other nodes, sorry. Let's look at node three. Uh, I'm going to put a two in the diagonal column because there's two edges and it's connected directly to node two and four, not to node one. Finally, node four, there's another three there because it's got three edges and it's connected to all of the other ones. It wasn't that simple. Notice I didn't do it because I know the pattern, I didn't need to even work out the incidence matrix. I know, I know the pattern. So um, I remember that was an exercise in a previous lecture. So that's how we construct K, okay? 
So uh, we can now think of it like this look. Um, we don't need those anymore, but let's think of these potentials x1, x2, x3, uh, 3, x4 is equal to uh, 1 minus 1, 0, 0. Now that's our linear system to solve. But as I've just uh, said, I want to ground that one. Okay? Now, grounding that, remember, if when I do this multiplication, I can think of the x1 going on the top there, the x2 going on the top there, the x3, x4, and then, of course, I bring it down due to do my matrix multiplication. But, of course, if x2 is 0, it means that this column essentially disappears. Okay? So, in a sense, I can, I can forget that column because I've set x2 to be 0. There's never anything that multiplies it because of my grounding. And do you know what? I am also going to do something that looks dramatic. I want to rem still have a square system. So what I'm going to do is, without any explanation yet, I am going to get rid of this equation. Because remember, if you delete a row, you're deleting an equation. Okay? And what I think I'll do is let's just write down that equation at the top here. Look at it. It's minus x1 plus 3x2 minus x3 minus x4 is equal to minus 1. Okay, this is my forgotten equation. Okay, I'm just going to keep it up there. What am I left with if I've forgotten um, that equation? I'm left with 2, 0, minus 1. 0, 2, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, 3 times x1, x3, x4 is equal to um, 1, 0, 0. Okay? So, so this I'm going to call my k hat. Uh, this is my new x hat and this is my new f hat. Okay? Because I've reduced everything. In, in fact, some people like to call this the reduced Laplacian. That's what happens, you call it, when you've, when you've ground in a node. Okay. Okay. Now, because I've gotten rid of that right null vector, and, and um, this, which is the cause of the reason that uh, k was not invertible, k hat is indeed invertible. And so, what I can do now is this is just a nice linear system. And as I'd hoped for at the beginning, the solution to this is just k inverse f hat. Okay. You can just go ahead and solve it. I'm not going to work that out. You can actually do this one by hand. It's actually quite easy to just solve by hand or put it in MATLAB, whatever you want. OK, and I'll just write down for you what I found the solution to be. I found it to be 5 eighths, 1 eighth and a quarter or 2 eighths. OK, so this is just a bit of calculation that I'm omitting. OK, now. Everything looks good except I'm a bit worried about my forgotten equation, okay? But I'm not that worried. Because let's just, this is of course x2, x1, this is x3, this is x4. Let's just substitute. So this substitute into the left-hand side of the forgotten equation. And you will see, look, that I get minus 5 over 8. Um, x2 is 0. We've grounded it. Minus x3, minus an eighth, minus x4. But a quarter is 2 eighths. So what do you notice about the left-hand side of my forgotten equation? It's minus 8 eighths, which is minus 1, which is equal to the right-hand side. So although I forgot that equation and solved what was left after grounding, I still actually ended up solving that equation. What? What? How could that be? How is magic happening here? No, it's not magic because remember, I didn't even let us start this calculation. Unless, let me get my uh, pink pen out, unless I force this right hand side to satisfy a constraint. Remember what it was? It was that x naught 
uh, transpose f was equal to zero. Did I write it like that? I can't remember. Anyway, that's what we had all the we had all the terms there adding up to zero. It's because I restricted the allow, the f on the right hand side there to satisfy that constraint before I started solving anything that I knew that when I that I was allowed to just forget an equation, okay, and that it wouldn't matter in the end because that equation would be solved in a sense. It was solved because I restricted the f before I even started. Okay, that's one way to think about it. Okay, but given that you know that any consistent solution for, for this kx equal to f has to be orthogonal to the right null space, it's it's ridiculous not to start with 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 this initial assumption. Okay, and then you can safely uh, kind of ignore a column and a row if you're solving uh, for the voltages for a given uh, set of divergences. Um, and, and, and you'll, you'll all be okay with your forgotten equation. Okay, this, by the way, uh, is the simplest example of uh, what we call a, a, a kind of Neumann problem. You, we, we'll come across that word more later. It's a Neumann problem because, in a sense, we're kind of specifying fluxes, or the fluxes into the circuit at two boundary points, okay, and working out the, the values of the potential everywhere. Okay, that's a, the simplest kind of discrete Neumann problem. Um, in the next lecture, we'll look at uh, a different type of problem called the Dirichlet problem.